Hey groups, my name is Matt Kuman. I'm so excited to be with you today, wherever I'm joining you today. Um, this past week, um, over the weekend, we talked about self-control. And I know this one spoke into my life um, very much because I know as, as a kid and as a student in school, I think most of my teachers would say, that Matt Kuman kid, he has no self-control. I often thought I was much funnier than the teachers and when the class got boring, I would let them know some funny things to kind of lighten the class up a little bit. So self-control is one of the things that I continuously had to work on as a kid and am still doing this to this day. So um, I'm excited for these group questions because I think uh, they've really worked in my life and I hope they can work in your group today as well. So let's dive right into these. The first group question is this. If we were to ask your friends or family, um, and if your family's there, maybe you can ask them right now a minute, what gets under your skin? What really annoys you or what gets you riled up? Question number two, and this is a multiple choice question. We don't do multiple choice very much, so I'm excited for this. How often do you get offended? A, often. B, actually, B. Is that backwards? Yeah, there it is. B, I forgot what the question was. B, (laughs) B, sometimes. C, seldom. Or D, never. How often do you get offended? And maybe even think, okay, how often do you get offended? offended inside, and then how often do you let it get outside of you? Question number three, um, what actions follow after you get offended or if you get angry? And a few of the follow-ups are, do you contain it? Or do you explode? Do you address it head on and have conversations with people if you do get offended? Or do you just wait and listen? What is your often response out of those things? Number four, I want you guys to read Proverbs 29, verse 11, and Proverbs 17, 27. Um, And after you read those, ask yourselves these questions. What would you need to do to allow wisdom to speak into your life more often? All right, for question number five, I'm going to actually read a little bit of Job. I I love the story of Job. It's such an interesting story. So if you have time, uh, read that on your own. But this comes out of Job 33. I mean, it says this. um, And this is God speaking to Job. It says, pay attention, Job. Listen to me. Be silent and I will speak. If you have anything to say, answer me. Speak up for I want to vindicate you. But if not, then listen to me. Be silent and I will teach you wisdom. I'm going to repeat that last phrase. Be silent and I will teach you wisdom. If you're unfamiliar with the story of Job, um, take some time to read that because it's it's a super interesting story because Satan actually brings destruction into Job's life. And Job has nowhere else to look than God. And God is saying, just be silent. Let, let me speak into your life. What things are preventing you in your life from slowing down and being silent and allowing God to maybe speak into it? All right, question number six. Um, And I want to bring us back to question number one. When we think about what easily offends us, I want you to think about that moment right now a minute. And if you take a step back from that, if you're thinking about that moment, what would wisdom speak to you? If wisdom is saying something, what would she whisper to you? Um, And with that knowledge, how can you If that instance comes up again that really upsets you, how can you allow wisdom to speak into your life and actually do something because of it?
And the last question today for you guys groups, was there anything in the teaching or as you were reading through devotions that spoke to you in a different way. Um, I'd love, there are so many different things that I hear in the message that don't come through necessarily in in these questions, but talk about it in your group. Is there anything that spoke to you in a different way? Hey groups, that is it for our normal questions. If you guys have time, I would strongly encourage you guys to go to the Digging Deeper questions um, because I love what this gets into, especially today. And it's asking the question, what's so bad about giving into cravings? Um, I know for me personally, if you follow Enneagram stuff, I'm a seven on the Enneagram and I have a fear of missing out. So cravings are a part of my life. I don't want to miss out on any little thing that that gets brought to my attention. Um, And often I ask and often I hear other people ask, what's so bad about giving into cravings? Does God want us to miss out on some fun things that our world has to offer? What Why is that? So if you have any questions like that, just like I do, head into the Digging Deeper section. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great night, and we are looking forward to seeing you again soon.